Hi, I'm Mrs. G. I teach at Arlington High School. Project Inspiration is based around Google's 80-20 philosophy, where Google engineers are given 20% of their time to work on things they're really passionate about. A lot of really cool things have come out of that 20% time, including Google Drive and even self-driving cars. So I really wanted to take that idea of giving someone time to work on something that they're passionate about and apply it to my classroom. In my classroom, my kids were given 20% of their time, or 45 minutes a week, to work on things that they were really passionate about. And all these projects had to be centered around their essential questions, which ranged from what is love, what is bravery, um, to why do people do community service. And they really came up with some incredible things. They did a clothing drive, some of them wrote journal entries, some people came up with posters, other people came up had organized a benefit concert. So it was really incredible for me as an educator to see what they came up with. So I hope you enjoy. This is Project Inspiration. Hi, I'm Marissa. Hi, I'm Claire. Hi, I'm Liz. Hi, I'm Natalie. And we're, we're seniors, seniors at Arlington, Arlington High, High School. School. So SIP Talks, otherwise known as Project Inspiration for our uh, particular class, is based on the Google philosophy of using 20% of your free time towards something that you're interested in, something you want to investigate more, whether it be um, research or just something like what we did. We got one day a week to kind of work on whatever we wanted, whatever thought interests us. We read the book Out of Africa. We absolutely hated it. However, <laughs> we found our essential questions in it. The main character did things that scared her, did things that influenced her life. From that, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to do things that scared us. Our book, Out of Africa, that we read, um, sh the main character took a risk, and we started out with us deciding to take risks, and then we developed it into fears, and it just related to the book, and it was something fun to do, and like different, and we thought it would be inspiring. There's a certain you know, courage that you find in yourself when you face your fears, especially when you don't want to do it so much, and then you finally do it. It's, it's a release that you feel, and it's very nice. And so we filmed it, and this is our presentation. Hi, right. Lee. Everything? This is Greek lasagna, natural type of German sausage, uh, stewed tomatoes, um, a Middle Eastern side dish, uh, something with potatoes and meat. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. What the hell is this? Okay. Enjoy. What the hell is this? Uh... I am the pickiest eater that I've ever met. I don't like to taste new things. I don't like to kind of put myself out there, especially if I don't think I'm going to like it because then it's like a waste for me. So I just, I don't know. I get nervous. I'm not going to like it. I'm going to offend the people around me. I hate the... Oh, oh come on now. I hate it. Yum, 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 yum in the top. Stop. Oh. I can't even find it. I really hated the outfit that Marissa gave me from her mom's closet. I was nervous because I thought everyone was going to judge me and that's my biggest fear. And going through the day was worse than torture and I felt self-conscious the whole time. I'm obsessed with my outfits. I actually like love, love buying clothes and making new outfits every day. I just don't like looking ugly in public. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> How do you feel? I don't feel good. I hate this. Okay. You're going first, you have the helmet on. Oh! <laughs> Alright, oh. here's the bike. Here's the driver. Say hi, Dan. So. Okay. Uh, is it your that. helmet? Yeah, no, 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 oh. you keep it on, I gotta... Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, here, put these on. I can't even see. <laughs> well, that's good. I think I'm dying. And you're safe. You haven't even touched the bike yet. <laughs> I need to loosen it. Oh, I'm like hyperventilating. Can I make it looser? <laughs> huh? Not as bad as the dog.
don't even like driving in cars, let alone a motorcycle. I don't even ride a bike. It's like a really fast bike. Go around the waist and don't let go. Yeah. Don't ever let go. Don't ever let go. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> go Woo! Woo! I can't even. I hate her so much for enjoying that. More than I did. <laughs> and not screaming. She did it a second time. <laughs> And here she goes again. <laughs> she had the balls to look at us! It was really fun. It felt like I was on a roller coaster and I really enjoyed it. Alright, oh. Natalie! Oh. Not no. I don't like tea. Just don't look. Just don't look. Here. Just don't look. Just don't look. I don't like their teeth or their claws. I don't like to get scratched or bit or anything. Even if they say it's like a nice animal and they've never done anything, I could be the first victim. There you go. There you go. Oh my God. Oh my God. Just pet him. Look at. I'm gonna keep him. Just pet him. Pet him. There you go. There you Yay, go. Natalie. Good Yay. job. Yay. I'm really nervous and I hope they like it. And I'm freaking out. You've been on my mind. I grow fonder. Every day is myself in time. Every mention of my name. God only knows. At the beginning of the whole Project Inspiration, I thought it was like I was just afraid of singing, but in the end, I realized I was just afraid of people judging me, and I thought they might think I was bad, but that didn't happen, so. Oh my god. Oh my god! That was a sound! Slender Man is sort of, it was based on these videos by a, um, YouTube account called Marble Hornets um, and it's based off just this myth of a man that abducts people in the woods at night. Uh, it's a pretty popular uh, internet, you know, phenomenon and uh, there's many people who play the game Slender Man on YouTube and uh, I saw one and I decided, you know, I wanted to do it. It was really scary. Holy ah, go! You have to go! What's going on? Allie was just like the cutest thing ever. I love her. She loves things. It was so much fun. It was amazing. I had so much fun. <laughs> I like drove the horse. I steered it all by myself. She let go. I had a really good time. My horse is really tame. I know how to do take her directions. So. Yeah. <laughs> I hope others see that you can kind of overcome your fear. That now I, I do kind of like horses. I'm better with animals because of it. That you're not just stopped at a roadblock. And that it, it can be fun too. Our friendship developed a lot through this whole project and we became so much closer. I can barely say that I was friends with any of these people before this. And now I can say that you know we're very good friends. That's something that was because of this project. Facing fears is important and everyone should do it more often because you get, like, you grow more as a person. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Hannah Pelletier, and I'm a senior at Arlington High School, and I'm about to graduate. This year, we took the time every week to uh, do something that inspires us, and we all had our own essential questions, and mine was, what do the choices you make, how do they affect your present and future? I decided to write a journal. Um, I base it on the decisions that I've made in my life and um, how they affect my present and future. My journal is basically this year put together all my decisions in my life that I felt were important, and every day I wrote a little something 
that I found of interest and basically chose the best decisions that I thought were most important. My number one decision was to um, take a year off of school and travel across the United States. And um, I've had a lot of people completely against it. I've had um, a lot of people in my family tell me that it's not going to happen and a lot of people around me tell me. But I've done literally every single thing possible. I have not once said that I regret the decision that I made because I am going to college in a year after this. I'm not saying, oh yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, forget college. I just wanted to take this experience first in my life. I worked about 40 hour weeks. Uh, my boyfriend's been working, you know, 60 hour weeks so that we can get the amount of money for this and I've raised so much money. I've worked at McDonald's. I worked there for three years, um, <laughs> almost. I worked, um, I work at Adams. Farragher Farms currently and I also worked at Forever 21 in the mall. I don't need to go to school right away because experiencing this new thing is huge and it may be different from what you guys are used to considering I'm in a college right now so I mean it's kind of ironic but I even came up with a route and I know it looks crazy. It is crazy. I want to hit all 50 states by the end of next year. I don't know how I'm going to hit Hawaii yet but I know that I can. <laughs> I'm a little nervous and I know it might not be possible but I'm definitely ready to go for it and accomplish it. I basically looked at different travel articles and different ways that I can um, tell people how to experience it and that they can do it too and I looked up some um, guy who's traveled the entire world and he's seen everything. His name's Nomadic Matt. I don't I know it sounds silly but he literally has every single article under the sun about what to do, what to get, where to go, and it literally, it inspired me. It told me that I could do it. I even emailed him and I was like, yeah, I'm 18 years old, everyone's telling me I can't do it, and he emailed me back and he was like, yeah, you know, you can do it, I know you can. He was probably just doing that to be nice, but it definitely inspired me, and it really helped me out um, to get where I needed to go. Couch surfing, which is where you literally go to different travelers' houses and you get to see, like, um, where they live and it's free because like um, they're travelers as well and they tell you their experiences and they help you find your experience and you get to stay there for a night and experience the town that they're staying in and it is the coolest thing I have found so far and I cannot wait to do it. I am in no way nervous about using couch surfing. It sounds scary when you go and you go to some random person's house and you go sleep there for a night but honestly it sounds like so much fun to be able to meet new people. I've also found um, different places I can eat at and different uh, crazy little sites, you know, like the world's biggest teapot and like the world's biggest that kind of stuff. So I can't wait to see that as well. Um, I know everyone thinks it's absolutely nuts uh, when you think of an 18 year old just like leaving. And I mean, I understand that, but um, I think that taking this entire year to you know, make this decision and choose that I, I can do it. I can work 40 hour weeks in the middle of the school year when I have an AP test the next day, I have to write an essay, I have to do this, and I've proved that I can make it this far. And I have, and I can leave September 1st when I'm planning to, and I've made it. And that is definitely a huge choice that has affected me. I have other choices in here as well. Um, I chose to, you know, date my boyfriend, I know, so in love, that kind of stuff, but... My boyfriend's really important to me. Um, I know it's stereotypical for high school to say that, but um, he's the one person here, really, who has, you know, glomped onto me and kind of stayed there, so, and I really care about him. I've moved 13 times in my life. Moving a lot has affected me in many ways. I honestly never settled down. I never got like really good friends where I could, you know, go out every weekend and hang out with them. And, you know, I never really got to know an area for like my whole life, like most of the people here have. Throughout Texas, New York, um, Colorado, and I never really settled down and I never really wanted to talk to anyone because um, I never thought that I would live anywhere. Here he is, he's down here and he's over there. <laughs> um, he's really just like pushed through my walls that I put up and he made me realize that, you know, I can be with someone and I can, you know, trust someone and, you know, I'm, I'm really happy and he's a dork just like me, so it really, it worked out. I cut my hair short. It really wasn't a decision to cut my hair. Um, I kind of had a, 
an accident and I burned my hair. So um, I just kind of kept it short after that and I really loved it, so. You know, I got a $700 car. That makes me feel like I'm gonna die every time I drive it, but I mean, it's a decision. Uh, I named it Phil. I have one more choice that I'm gonna share with you guys and um, it's really, really personal to me and um, that's kind of why I'm shaking up here in the first place and I just kind of want you guys to bear with me and just um, try to listen and learn. I kind of can't leave it down here because I have to read it, but um, it's my experience with anorexia that I've had um, since last summer and um, it was probably the hardest thing I have ever gone through. Um, so I'm just gonna read it. Um, every single girl thinks they are more awkward and ugly than others. At least most do, and that's normal. Um, I didn't go the normal route though. I know what you're saying right now, anorexia is not a choice. It isn't. It's a very serious disorder that people deal with equating self-worth with thinness. However, the choices I made to leave myself there um, were conscious, as well as decisions I made getting out of it. They are very important in the scheme of my life. Basically, since I was tiny, I was compared to my beautiful sisters. Uh, they're 20, they're like 5, 6, you know, they're the twins that everyone loves. And um, I even got a comment in freshman year that said, you know, your sisters are so hot, you know, what happened to you? And um, yeah, it's funny, it's all right. It, but, um, <laughs> but you know, it followed me through the years and um, I kind of let it get to me and other things kind of got to me. I saw like models and I saw, you know, all the girls at my school, I mean, are 5'2 and they have long straight hair and I'm 5'9 and I feel like Bigfoot next to them, you know, and, um, and like being 5'9 and 130 pounds, I was like, oh, I have to be like, you know, 100 pounds like them. And um, junior year started it, I started to, you know, eat healthy and exercise, and I felt really confident, but um, I took it too far, and I started to eat smaller and smaller amounts, and um, I started to lose weight. Uh, I don't really remember much about last summer. I didn't go outside or go swimming, and um, I was too tired or sick to do anything, and I really regret that, and I, my boyfriend tells me I, you know, barely talked about anything and, you know, I had to put him through that experience and um, basically out of all the decisions I've made, putting my heart into my weight and dieting was the worst. And I still struggle from the consequences today. I mean, back over the summer, I got to be about five foot nine and maybe like 113 when I should be at least like 130. and. Um, you know, I, I still have confidence issues today, but I mean, I've been getting better. I'm, you know, I look normal today and, you know, they've been making sure I eat and I don't pay attention as much anymore. And like I said, I don't really remember anything, but I don't recommend it to anyone. And I think everyone looks great. And if you take the time to get to know someone and there's something wonderful about everyone. And um, I just didn't see it in myself. And I didn't, I made the wrong decision to change myself because I was great the way I was back then and that was the worst decision, and I would wanted to tell you the best decision and the worst decision, and the best decision was my trip, and the worst was um, my anorexia. I really hope that people will realize that the decisions you make have a huge impact on your life, and anything that you choose, whether big or small, is going to change something in your life. To wrap this up, I did want to tell you why I'm telling you these personal things about me, because you know, everyone makes choices in their life. They do. And whether they're huge choices, like the things I shared with you today, or they're stupid, um, like my car, they all have an impact on your life. And for the students in here, you're going to be going to college next year. And for all the students I interviewed in the past, they all said, you know, oh, yeah, like college is the biggest decision that I've made. But it's not yet. And you have so much more that you are going to see and experience and you're going to move to different places and see everything that's out there and I just want everyone to be ready for the things that are going to impact their life. You know, it's my life, it's my choices. You know, that's kind of the title of what this whole thing was about. Thank you. I'm Amanda D'Angelo and I'm a senior at Arlington. I'm Tara Gusso and I'm a senior at Arlington High School as well. SIP Talks are basically um, presentations that we've given to our class and to an audience about um, an essential question we got out from reading a book. Um, and ours was about love and the different type of relationships and how society views them. So my friend Tara and I read the book um, A Room with a, with a View um, by E.M. Forster. 
and immediately after reading it, we knew exactly what we wanted to do. When we started um, looking for books to pick with this project, me and Amanda really had no idea what book we wanted to pick. We had a huge list of probably at least 100 books that we had to choose from, and I was just one night going through the list, like looking it up online, seeing what it was about. And I just happened upon this one. It was about a girl who went to Italy, and actually me and Amanda are both Italian, so I was like, oh, that's interesting. So then it, I found out it was about love and her struggles with like who she should love, and those are kind of books that I like, and I'm sure Amanda likes too, so that's why we picked We wanted to research uh, the different types of love out there in the community. Um, we were we thought about this essential question because the main character in our novel had to decide between following her heart and doing what society deemed was best for her. And sometimes throughout society, we see that society implements our own opinions because we're sometimes afraid to go out of the norm. So we interviewed a bunch of people from all different um, genders and age gaps and sexualities to see their opinions on different topics. So before I actually start my presentation, I'm just going to list off a couple of situations that we interviewed about. Um, and I want you to kind of think about what you think about those topics, just so you can have like your own personal check-in throughout the presentation. We first interviewed them about their own definition of love. We asked them about large age gaps. Uh, more than five years. We asked them about interreligion marriage, interracial marriage, and same-sex marriage. So just have that in your mind as I go through the rest of the presentation. So obviously before we could talk about more in depth, we had to decide, we had to figure out, well, what exactly is love? So we looked up a couple definitions and the dictionary states that love is an intense feeling of deep affection. Um, there are a couple other quotes and says, love is a purpose of human life, no matter who is controlling it, it is to love whoever is around to be loved. And the Bible says that God is love. And here are what some of our interviewees said about their definition of love. It's the merging of two different lifestyles together and being able to find a, common, a commonality between them and being able to coexist. Uh, I think that love is just uh, caring more about your relationship with someone else than yourself. I think it can happen between friends and family and be in a romantic setting. Okay, love. My definition of love would be complete devotion and respect to another person. Okay, so now we ask them about large age gaps. The only time where I kind of question it would be you know, someone who's still going through maturity in terms of, you know, like a teenager and a and a 30-year-old I don't think would necessarily be appropriate just because the teenager doesn't necessarily have the life experience to know whether or not the relationship is appropriate for them. A 20-year-old has experienced a lot more, so I think that, uh, you know, the 18-year-old potentially could be taken advantage of, um, possibly in some other ways, and... Um, I think your risk for other unhealthy signs of relationships definitely will go up when you have that large age gap with young people. The age of five year difference, I would say, really doesn't uh, make a difference after you, after you're 30. I don't think age gaps matter. People mature at different rates. Depending on how people are mature-wise, I think if they're mature that a large age gap wouldn't matter and that they can be far apart in age. But when you're younger, you don't want a 20 year old dating a 10 year old, that'd be really weird. <laughs> but I think when, as you get older, the age difference matters less and less. How many of you think that society would rather have the male be older than the female? By a show of hands. How many think that the female should be older? <laughs> um, well, personally, I am in a relationship with someone who is younger than me. He's right over there. <laughs> um, and I was actually really shocked by the statistics that I did find. Um, and they were that 35% of women said that they would not mind the seven year age difference. 44% of single people say that five years is the biggest acceptable age gap. But only one in 100 women that were interviewed said the ideal relationship is with a younger man. So I'm representing that one right now. <laughs> a lot of them think that um, it comes back to the male kind of being more dominant in the relationship and they feel that he should be the older one because they think it works better. And um, a lot of stereotypes 
uh, are seen as if the woman is younger, she's kind of only marrying him for like money or something. Um, so that's a lot of the statistics that I got out of researching it. And the next thing we talked about was interreligion marriage. In terms of interreligion marriages, I actually know um, a young couple who just got married and are going through um, struggles with this. One person is very religious, whereas the other person is actually doesn't have a defined religion at all. Um, and it's definitely a struggle to kind of come to, you know, that, that middle ground and, you know, learn to be able to um, meet with each other's beliefs and understand that you have different beliefs. The, uh, the last wedding I went to was actually an inter-religion uh, wedding, and uh, it was awesome. It was a beautiful wedding. Um, the two people who got married have done really, really well so far and are really happy. Um, there was a lot of give and take uh, as far as what customs were going to be and what spots of the wedding and stuff like that. Um, but I don't really think it caused like a, a major amount of conflict, just um, people agreeing to disagree in certain spots. Interreligion marriage just uh, does not bother me at all. I think they just got to decide on which is going to be the, the dominant uh, religion to raise their children. With interreligion marriage, the statistics show that interfaith marriages are actually three times more likely to be divorced or separated um, than those who are in the same religion marriages. Um, statistics on it, 56% say that they're okay with it, 34% say they're not okay with it, and 10% are still unsure. Um, and this is what they had to say about interracial marriages. Uh, one of the things I always joke about with this is that I actually like am, in the like, literal sense, colorblind. So I always kind of, uh, when I have these discussions about uh, interracial relationships, I tell people that I don't see in color. And uh, I don't. You know, I don't. And I think that, you know, there's still different parts of the state and the country where people would look twice if they saw different races walking down the uh, street holding hands. It's hard enough for two people to get together and, and, and devote their lives to each other. I think any interracial marriage would uh, just add too much pressure. I think society still doesn't fully accept it. When it comes to interracial relationships, I was brought up by my grandfather that it's wrong because I'm half Hispanic and half white and my grandpa was mad at my mom for being with a Hispanic guy. But it comes to you don't choose who you fall in love with and that's a big thing and people don't see that. In 2010, 1 in 12 couples were interracial and 73% of African American and white couples are with an African American male and a white female. And as you can see by the little chart, um, there is over the past years, uh, there's been an increase in the growing diversity of um, interracial couples. Um, okay, and the last thing we asked them about was gay marriage, and I'm sure everyone's heard a lot about it, and they all have their own opinions, but here's what our interviewees have to say. Because I'm a relatively religious person, um, marriage, in my opinion, is the union between a man and a woman in a religious setting. Again, as long as uh, as long as everybody's happy, uh, and uh, people don't try to put their views on me, I'm I'm fine with it. Personally, I don't think the word marriage and same sex belongs in the same sentence. When it comes to same sex marriage, obviously I am for it, but I was brought up against it by my dad and kind of my mom, but not so much. Um, but I've, I've viewed a lot of my own opinions on it even before I came out and. I think it's you love who you love and you can't help that. Statistics on gay marriage is that strongly in favor is about 53%. This was about as of like two weeks ago. Um, it grew 3% in about four months. Um, opposed of it is 42% and they say this is probably because of the strong Republican opposition. And unsure is about 5%. Um, but political support has, public support has increased 1% per year for the past 20 years. So. The one thing that Tara and I decided through this whole thing is that as teenagers, we don't really notice what's going on around us. We have our own tight-knit community, which we see every day. Um, and to be honest, if someone asked me what I thought of a couple, I would picture a guy and a girl. I would picture them both white, and I would picture them the same age. Because that's the type of relationship I am most surrounded by. <coughs> so what I really wanted my, uh, my classmates to take away from this is that this stuff is happening around us in our own community. And um, I, sometimes I think that they don't see that. So we put together a collage, and this is all different types of relationships that are found in our school, um, besides the older couple in the corner. 
um, <laughs> each of these people walk our hallways. And I think that it's very important for our students to realize that this isn't just something that they see on the news and hear about in church or they hear about in class or like um, anything like that. That it's right there in their own community and I think that's something that they definitely need to realize. So at the end of this, I wasn't trying to change your opinions at all. I wasn't trying to tell you that something was right and something was wrong. I related this to my classmates and to those of you who are going on to college is that Throughout college and the rest of our lives, no matter for however long they may be, we're always going to be subjected to new things. We're always going to have new opinions come into our lives. People are going to keep telling us things. But the point is, is that we don't have to believe them, but we have to be open to them. We have to be able to take them in and view other people's points. We weren't trying to persuade our, our audience to view a certain way or not view a certain way. We just wanted to get out of it that there are so many different opinions in the world and people people formulate their own opinions on their own and yeah you don't have to think what someone else thinks just because they tell you to but you should be open to why they're thinking that way where they're coming from but not be judgmental to their opinions and i hope that's what you got